owners who own these buildings were already pretty favorable towards preservation. So this time when we went to city council, when we went to city council for Lower Downtown, we only had two property owners supporting us, two. And yet the council voted in favor. This time when we went, we had all the property owners supporting us, except for two people who owned land under the Paramount Theater. Everybody else came supporting designation. Why? Because Lower Downtown had been so successful. We made the case there. They understood the economics. And now this famous chocolate chip cookie district that we created in Denver is another model for the country. And of course, this one is just recently done. I, got to, I get to look at this out my window every day, so this has been fun to watch. And that, along with this property tax incentive that we need to get reinstated once Denver's financial future gets to be a little um, more sound, really created another very important national model for the country. Of course, we can't not talk about the state historical fund because Colorado, at the time that this was created, had $19 million available statewide for grants. It made Colorado. Colorado had more money for preservation than any other state in the union. That's down to about $5 million now with some of the other encumbrances on it for the help to build the new state museum building and some operational support for the historical study. But it still is a steady, ready source of funding to help save historic buildings across the country. $247 million since 1990 has gone into preservation work across the country. This is just a small smattering of projects. Trinity Church, the, the Georgetown School that have benefited from this money and the great work that, that Ed's staff does in Denver to get this money distributed across the state. And of course, we're grateful because a year ago, almost exactly, Ed came and gave, uh, we had a wonderful presentation at this is the Emerson School. Uh, the National Trust was proud to receive one of only two half a million dollar sustainable grants from the State Historic Fund to demonstrate that older and historic buildings can be made more energy efficient they don't have to be torn down. Uh, this is, of course, is the historic picture of the Emerson School and the new one. We have three goals for this project. Obviously, we want to save the building. The architect is Robert Rushlob, same guy that did Trinity Church and the Observatory and Observatory Park and Dormore. This is his oldest standing school, and now we're the proud owners of it. Um, we want to assist in the ongoing revitalization of Capitol Hill. We want to provide office space, shared office space for our partners, Historic Denver and Colorado Preservation Inc. But more importantly for us, we're going to show the world that an old building can be made more energy efficient. We're going to start by tightening up the building envelope. We're going to put a lot of insulation in the attic. We're going to restore all the wood windows and make sure they're properly snug in, their, in, their win in the spaces so there's no leakage of air coming in and out of them. But very exciting, and this is a large part of the grant we got from the state, we're going to put geothermal on the site. And the geothermal is being sized to handle all of our cooling needs and 80% of our heating needs for the building going forward. And our goal here is, is not just gold lead. Our goal here is to go net zero uh, once we um, look at the roof. And hopefully there will be some changes in photovoltaics that will allow us in the future to re-roof this with solar panels on our roof. That will mean if we can just deal with that little water problem we have in the state about not being able to keep the water, we could in fact go net zero. So why preserve? Well, it saves our history. It saves our beautiful architectural beauty. We now know, thanks to Dana Crawford and others, that it makes good economic sense. It's sustainable, and it, it allows us to conserve our resources. And most importantly, it benefits the people. So thank you, Denver, for everything you've done for preservation across the country.